Raptors open the new year on the road, looking for a new start. They were in Memphis, taking on John Morant and the Grizzlies, taking the third quarter, Spurs trailing by two, Victor Wimby. You see that shot? Here, watch this. Off the left leg, in and out, in, out, in. Look, look, this is the best shot of the year right there. Backboard, rim, backboard, rim, in. They were leading 51-50, came all the way from 10 down after that shot. Fourth quarter, Grizzlies growled, Morant right to win. Ooh, <laughs> that kick can play. Look at this, right in, eee, right at Wimby. All right, here's your final score. Spurs, and there's another one from Wimby, though. All right, got him back a little bit, but Memphis ends up with the win, 106 to 98. San Antonio, Wimby Yama had 20 points. And San Antonio is now 5-19 and 19 against Western Conference teams. They are 5-28 and 28 overall. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. And the Houston Texans head to the final game of the regular season in a three-way tie for the top spot of the AFC South. They are tied with Indianapolis and Jacksonville. Still a lot can happen when it comes to winning the division and making the playoffs. The Texans looking for a playoff spot for the first time since 2019. If Houston beats the Colts, they're in. If they beat the Colts and the Jaguars lose or tie, the Texans would win the AFC South division title. Houston could tie the Colts and get in as long as Jacksonville loses and Pittsburgh either loses or ties. There are a lot of different ways this thing can shape up. So here's the easy part. As they get ready for that rematch, the easy way to get in is just win on Saturday. Rookie C.J. Stroud, pretty excited about the opportunity. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'm ready to have fun. I think, like I was saying earlier, it's just I go be myself, you know, go go be ourselves, go just put it on the field, and uh, there's nothing, nothing to lose, you know. Like, I mean, there's a lot to lose, but in my mindset, there's nothing to lose. What's the worst that can happen, you know, by playing hard and playing fast? So uh, we, don't, we don't doubt ourselves. We really think we can win this game, and that's the plan. So we're going to go out there and just execute. That young guy right there should be the rookie of the year. Texans and Colts kick off 7-15 Saturday night. You can see the game live right here on KSAT 12. And after having things fall into place last Saturday for the Cowboys, they have one regular season left. And all of that sudden, it means a whole lot more than just a playoff spot. They'll be on the road against the Commodores. Commodores. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to bring the whole band or just a few of the singers. I don't know where that came from. The Commanders. The Cowboys. The people say, what? The Cowboys clinch the NFC East with a win. Dallas currently holds the two seed in the NFC East, and the Philadelphia Eagles fell to the fifth seed after they got beat by the Cardinals. Yes, the Cardinals, the really bad Cardinals. They only had three wins until they beat the Eagles. The division was the Eagles to lose, but after Dallas emotional win over Detroit, and Coach Mike McCarthy knew exactly what was on the table. Yes, I mean, I, it's not, nothing surprises me. You know, I'm, um, I, was, I, was, I was there rooting for the Cardinals all the way, my wife and I, in the fourth quarter. But no, I, 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 you, see it, you see it all the time. I mean, it's just a, it's such a competitive league. So the question is, will this be easy like Sunday morning? The clincher for the Cowboys kicks off Sunday, 325 FedEx Field. Did you get that one? I hope somebody did. Hey, after a long and pretty successful career, former UTSA star quarterback Frank Harris announced on social media that he has decided to retire from the game of football. Harris saying football has taught him so much, but after 10 surgeries, his body has been through a lot. And while having no regrets, he believes it's the best move on the sport on to a new chapter of his life. Harris is also a Clemens Buffalo. Hard to remember, but yes, he did go to Clemens. Oh. He owns 38 school records at UTSA, not to mention leading them to their first bowl win just last month. So oh, congratulations man. to Frank Harris, great decision. He should be a part of that UTSA program, hopefully for years and years to come, if that's what he decides that he wants to do. So they would love to have him. Well, it's a new year. Yep. A lot can happen. Yes, it can. <laughs> now, new today at 5, if you're a coffee drinker, then you know one of the things about coffee besides the aroma and flavor. It's going to be hot. We're going to show you some products that could help your cup of joe from losing its steam without heating it up in the microwave. Today at 5, after Entertainment Tonight. Get you outside with live can. I, it's kind of a raw day. It's not all that cold, but it does remind you of one of those winter raw days. 
We know we haven't had like a brutal winter so far. It's uh, it's been pretty tame. Uh, it's a little chilly today, yes, but uh, not as bad as it could be, I suppose. Cloudy skies, and we're going to see temperatures stay pretty cool into the afternoon. Let me show you a picture in our case at Connect. You guys did a great job of sending in those pictures of the rain gauges, so we know how much rain you got where you were. Uh, this is just another example uh, here in San Antonio, close to two inches. There were certainly some spots on the northwest side of San Antonio. Uh, they got close to that mark. Some plentiful rain last night and a little bit of small hail to go along with it. Uh, but the rain, as we've been saying, is so very welcome. Look at the numbers. Uh, again, 1.05 Leon Springs, Chavanel Park, close to an inch downtown. More the order of a quarter of an inch, so the numbers were a little lower as you went south. Timberwood Park closed in on two inches. Uh, and notice that this rain fell in an area where we are in drought. So the drought monitor is behind these rainfall numbers in that red area you see there is where we have been in extreme drought for what feels like years at this point, uh, but a long, long time. And so this rain fell in a really good spot. Not only that, it also fell over the recharge zone and we've seen the aquifer respond today. So it is all good news. As far as the forecast goes, we're going to call it mostly cloudy, although the sun will be uh, those peaks of sun will be few and far between. 53 is our forecast high down the, into the 50s and eventually 40s by tomorrow morning with mostly cloudy conditions. And then tomorrow, a lot of clouds before rain comes back into the picture late tomorrow night uh, into Friday. We'll detail the timing on that and let you know how much rain we can expect here in just a couple minutes. A busy forecast. Thanks, Justin. Ford is recalling more than 112,000 F-150 pickup trucks because of a rollaway risk. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says a rear axle hub bolt in some of the vehicles might break, and that could cause the truck to roll away when in park or lose drive power. The recall includes the F-150s from 2021 through 2023. Those that are equipped with the Trailer Tow Max Duty Package. Ford working on a fix. The company says drivers who hear a clicking or rattling noise should take their vehicle to the dealership. House Republicans appear to be moving forward with steps to impeach the Homeland Security Secretary. The GOP has been looking to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas over his handling of immigration at the southern border. During an interview today, Mayorkas tried to downplay concerns about an impeachment, and he advocated strongly for funding for border security. A spokesperson for the Homeland Security Committee says the impeachment hearings will begin next week. Former President Donald Trump appealing a decision by Maine's Democratic Secretary of State that he cannot be on the ballot up there. He's accused of violating a constitutional ban against people who engaged in insurrection holding office. Trump was also expected to appeal a similar ruling by Colorado Supreme Court to the U.S. Supreme Court. The nation's highest court has never ruled on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. The U.S. Supreme Court is likely to have the final word on Trump's eligibility in Colorado, Maine, and elsewhere. President Joe Biden is heading back out on the campaign trail. His first stop of the year will be Saturday on the third anniversary of the January Capitol insurrection. Biden is set to deliver a speech near Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. He is expected to pick up the pace of his political events in the coming months as he faces a possible rematch with Donald Trump. Israel's war on Hamas starting to reach beyond its borders. That's prompting fear that the conflict will become regional and global oil prices will rise. Iran stationing a naval vessel in the Red Sea after the U.S. sank three boats there. If oil tankers can get through the Red Sea, it could increase the cost of oil and drive up prices at the pump. Iran says 103 people have now died after a bomb went off today at an event honoring an Iranian general that was killed in a U.S. airstrike in 2020. More than 200 people are also hurt. Iranian state media is calling this a terroristic attack. No one has immediately claimed responsibility for what appears to be the deadliest militant attack to target Iran since its 1979 Islamic revolution. Rescue workers working their way through the rubble left behind by earthquakes in Japan and crews are racing against the clock since those quakes hit a couple of days ago and dozens are still believed to be trapped under collapsed buildings. Officials say the chances of survival decreased significantly after three days. Also adding to the rush, heavy rain is in the forecast for the area. And that's sparking concerns about landslides and further damage to half crumbled homes. At least 62 people have died. Meanwhile, crews are also working to deliver water, blankets, food, and other supplies to survivors. 
but this community sits on a narrow peninsula, making it harder to reach some areas. And it's not the only major story we're following out of Japan. Investigators are still on the ground after those two planes crashed and sparked an explosion. Investigators are focusing on communication between air traffic control and the planes. Japan's transport ministry released a transcript that showed the Coast Guard plane did not have clear takeoff approval. And meanwhile, the images of yesterday's fiery scene paint a picture of potential fiery scene. Of, uh, however, everyone on the board of that passenger plane was able to escape. ABC's Gio Benitez explains how they were able to get to safety in just seconds. The images are straight out of an action movie. A massive Airbus 350 engulfed in flame. The black smoke from outside started to infiltrate the cabin. Anton D was one of the nearly 400 people scrambling to get out, telling GMA he was on a ski trip with his family. It was pitch black, fires outside the window, and black smoke in the, in the entire hall. And you couldn't uh, breathe. Incredibly, all aboard the commercial jet surviving. Experts call it an apparent textbook evacuation. Flight attendants have to take command immediately of the cabin, tell people what to do, where to do it, how to do it, which exit to go out of. This Japan Airlines A350 was essentially brand new, just two years old. It's the first A350 to be a total loss. This ABC News virtual view shows the biggest factor in their survival, the eight emergency exits. All planes above 44 passengers are required to prove they can be evacuated in less than 90 seconds. The 90 second rule in testing before certification is simply a benchmark that all airplanes are, are tested against. In reality, we know it's going to take longer than that in the real world. But what's amazing is it doesn't take that much longer. Those emergency exits playing the most crucial role, some people sliding down the emergency slides. The flight attendants opened up the doors and we all in a line uh, ran out and jumped off the flight and uh, landed on the grass. They screamed and they had the flashlights and they were doing the signals and it seemed like they had a, a very good communication. Notice in the video how passengers leave their luggage behind. That's exactly what you're supposed to do during an emergency. This is also why you're told to put away electronics and raise seats and tray tables, all to clear aisles for evacuations. The fuselage, made of carbon fiber like most modern airplanes, that's stronger than aluminum and also fire resistant. That carbon fiber giving the 379 people on board the time they needed to get out safely. And those pilots controlling the doomed plane, keeping it steady and straight as it rolled down the runway, critical for that safe evacuation. Scientists say they have developed a new type of antibiotic to treat bacteria that is resistant to most current antibiotics and kills a large percentage of people with an invasive infection. The bacteria thrives in medical environments like hospitals and nursing homes. People at the highest risk of infections are those who have a catheter, who are on a ventilator, or who have open wounds from surgery. The pathogen is so difficult to eliminate that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has not approved a new class of antibiotic to treat it in more than 50 years. However, researchers say the new antibiotic can effectively kill the bacteria. Now to an alleged cyber kidnapping in Utah. A Chinese exchange student who was reported missing last week was found cold and alone. This comes after his parents say they paid thousands of dollars in ransom money. ABC's Eva Pilgrim with the scammers duped the student and how they duped his parents as well. A 17-year-old Chinese exchange student discovered camping in the woods in Utah, cold and alone. Now safe and reunited with his host family after police say he was the latest victim of a fraud called cyber kidnapping. Kai Zong was first reported abducted by his family in China on December 28th after they received a photo that showed their son, who was in the U.S. to experience life at an American high school, had been kidnapped. His parents sent 80000 to bank accounts in China to pay his ransom. But it turned out the family were victims of a cyber kidnapping scam, where kidnappers target foreign exchange students and their families, telling each that the other is in danger. They then convince the student to isolate themselves and send pictures or cell phone videos, making it appear they're being held captive to their parents, who in turn hand over ransom money electronically. 
actors are able to manipulate both a victim and their family into believing that something has happened to the victim. Experts say these criminals are cunning, likely targeting people who are out of their element, people who are new to the country and are unfamiliar with law enforcement. After paying the ransom, Kai's parents notified his Utah high school who contacted local police and Kai's host family who said there was no evidence he had been forcibly removed from the home. The reason why they have him seclude himself in the woods or away from somebody, or everybody in society, is so they can continue to extort as much money as possible. Cyber kidnapping scams can be a lesson to families of kids studying or even working abroad. This is a possibility and just because somebody contacts you online doesn't mean it's real. A scary situation. Live cam. 49 degrees, a lot of clouds. It looks like a winter day. It does. It does. <laughs> it's it's good. Well, winter. you know, we're going to have a few days like that. It's inevitable. Uh, we've had a pretty good stretch, honestly, of, uh, of nice weather to end December. January started off on a nice note as well, other than the cloudy day today. So far, only 50. That's it. We're not going to warm up much more than that. 43 below this morning. The records are 86 and 16. Set back in 1971 and 19. 11. When is our next chance of rain? We'll take a look at it and time it out for you. Coming up. U-Haul says more people moved to Texas than any other state in 2023. It's the third year in a row the Lone Star State topped U-Haul's growth index reports. Each year, U-Haul calculates the number of one-way trips of its trucks to and from each state. Texas had a net gain of about 174,000 people in 2023. Number two on the list was Florida, followed by North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. At the bottom, California. The report provides a snapshot of do-it-yourself movers, but it doesn't account for other rental companies or when people hire a moving company. U-Haul says the report does not correlate directly to population or economic growth. But what's not to love about Texas? Yeah, I love everything about Texas. Everything. I agree. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah. And it's and warmer better. down here, you know, yeah. <laughs> for the most part. Uh, we've had a pretty mild winter. It's been really nice. The uh, one big problem we've had this week, and a lot of people are suffering from this, cedar fever. Take a look at the mountain cedar this uh, over the last seven days. So today we're at 1,040. But you go back to New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, those are some big numbers, 23,800. That caused a lot of people to have allergy issues. Thankfully, yesterday's rain has brought the numbers down, and it's a little better than it was. We'll see where we end up tomorrow, uh, and hopefully with some more rain coming up tomorrow night and Friday morning, we'll keep these numbers trending downward. But we are in the thick of it. We are in the heart of mountain cedar season now. 50 outside, cloudy skies, dew point is at 42, with a northerly wind at about nine miles per hour. Satellite picture shows we've got a lot of clouds that continue to stream in over Bear County. That's keeping temperatures on the cool side today. 49 at Randolph, 51 New Braunfels, still in the mid 40s up around Bernie. Uh, you zoom out some, there are some breaks in the clouds and where we are getting more sun, temperatures are warmer. Carrizo Springs, 59. Uh, Catua, 58. Del Rio, 57. Underneath the clouds, still quite a few 40s. Uh, we'll probably only make it up to about 53 or so today. You'll find the warmer numbers down to the south and the west and then cooler numbers up in the hill country. Probably Bernie Kerrville, you're, you're going to stay in the 40s most of today. And there is also a little bit of a wind chill that we have to deal with. So lots of clouds, no rain. As we get into tomorrow, clouds actually thicken up some. I don't think we're going to see much sun tomorrow either. And then by the afternoon. We'll start to see a couple showers popping up. Now, the evening commute, we might be okay. These are going to be light. But by the evening hours, drizzle, showers start to develop, and it's just overall damp as we get into Thursday night into Friday morning. Uh, these showers will continue to push east, and by tomorrow or Friday morning, I should say, a lot of this will be moving east of our area. But our eastern counties could get in on some heavier rain as some thunderstorms try to start to develop. At this point, it'll probably be east of San Antonio. And then we get to clear out. So most of Friday looks pretty good. It's just going to be that Thursday night, very early Friday time frame. And this is the storm system that will be bringing us that chance of rain uh, by late tomorrow. This is the one that just came through. And then behind that, another bigger storm system near Alaska. You see the big pinwheel here? 
this is just some energy. We're going to get some energy that's going to rotate around that and then eventually push into the United States. And this is going to turn into a pretty powerful system that will work its way towards Texas. So we've got kind of a parade of systems here working in our direction. But it's this next one that comes in on Monday. That's the one we showed you up there near Alaska. This is going to be a potent one. As it moves into Texas, it really gets wound up. Uh, for us, we'll see a brief window for some showers and maybe a storm, but this will likely produce severe weather along the Gulf Coast, Houston over to New Orleans, some heavy rain from North Texas, and then some very heavy snow on the north side of it. We're also going to get some very windy conditions on the back side of this thing. We can see some gusts 40 to maybe even 50 miles per hour as we get into Monday night, Tuesday morning. As I said earlier, if you haven't taken down the Christmas decorations, do it this weekend. You're going to want to because it will all blow away Monday night. 60% chance of rain Thursday night into Friday. A good weekend, upper 60s Saturday and Sunday. And there's that chance of rain Monday, 30%. It gets windy and cooler on Tuesday. We'll be right back. All right, let's get downtown. Mike and Fiona, Market Square. I just hope Fiona was able to find some bacon to go along with all that chocolate Mike was mixing up down there. I will soon. You know... <laughs> But this chocolate, you don't need anything with no. it because this is the real deal. You've got the best. And then this is like up here. This is the real deal. And Matt Willis from Swiss Chocolate Shop. So best you can get in the world, basically, right? Correct. It's the gold medal winner from the Italian Pastry Chefs Academy. Okay. And to get your hands on it, you have got a discount as well, right? Yes. SA Live on SwissChocolateShop.com. That's shop spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. We will tell yes. you where you can find him and all these great chocolates. So as David was saying and we've alluded to, we want to know which weird food you know do you like with chocolate or unusual pairing? combinations yeah kind of like you said bacon chocolate covered bacon i had that once on this show and it's, it was so good it's, i mean bacon chocolate you can't go wrong there so <laughs> all right now back down to reality and we're talking about healthy foods and meal prepping jen what's going on Hey, chocolate's good, right? You know, moderation, right? Yes, we are here at Local Health Market where they do the cooking for you. Now, these meals right here, you got a chicken enchilada casserole, fiesta chicken bowl, and they are all curated by the nutritionist who owns it here. So we're gonna tell you all about that and how you can get some healthy meals to go. And look at what we're stirring up here. Of course, the Vaquero Cook-Off is coming up in February, and we are going to be making some Fideo Loco today and talking about the junior competition. Yes, indeed. Oh, that looks so good. And what to wash it down with? A local brewery. They have brewed their own beer and also their own non-alcoholic beverages as well. We'll tell you all about that. Yes, all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.